This video is all about getting around inside SimNet Composer smoothly and efficiently. The tips and tricks outlined here are aimed at making your workflow as streamlined as possible. I'm using a pre-prepared example site file in this video, so allow me to quickly run you through it. Don't worry, the finer details of how this site file actually works aren't important for any of the detail presented in this video. So, we're dealing with a hypothetical university lecture theatre here. It has four microphone inputs, lectern and lapel for the academic, and two wireless handhelds for audience participation. There are also a few stereo program sources thrown into the mix. On the output side, the DSP feeds a stereo front of house and a mono speech reinforcement system, as well as a hearing augmentation system. We also support lecture recording, having separate outputs for both microphone and program audio. Finally, we have a local monitoring output, which could be used by a technician on site during commissioning or even repurposed for special events. And here is the DSP design. Notice we're using a Radius AEC. Even though there is no remote conferencing, the AEC processing is used for noise cancelling and to cancel reinforced program audio from the recorded microphone feeds. So, let's start with some basics of the view. You may have noticed that Composer supports three zoom levels, which can be accessed from the view menu. You can also switch between zoom levels quickly by holding the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel in or out. When zoomed in, or if you have a large site file that exceeds your screen resolution, you'll probably want to pan your viewport around to get a view of things. You can of course use the scroll handles at the side and the bottom of each window to pan about, but by far the easiest method is to use the mouse scroll wheel and the shift key. Mouse scroll on its own pans up and down, while holding down the shift and scroll pans side to side. You may have also noticed that I'm running all Composer windows unmaximized. Although it's helpful to maximize the design view to make the most of your display real estate, this forces all windows to open in maximized view, including module GUIs, which effectively hides the design view. Therefore, it's best to restore all windows and just manually resize the design view to fill full screen, so your module windows all float on top. Now, if I click back on the design view, my mixer module view disappears, as the design view window is now brought to the front. The mixer GUI is still open, it's just sitting behind the design view window. When commissioning and jumping around between modules then, it can be tedious to bring module windows to the front using the window menu. A quicker way is to use the bring all module views to the top command, which is under the view menu, or by keyboard shortcut, control F7. If I'm working with a set of module views that I want to stay on top of the design view, I can use the screen layouts function within Composer to make them easy to access. For example, let's say I want to be tweaking my front of house loudspeaker manager while at the same time keeping an eye on my inline compressor and limiter. If I open all three modules up and use Control F7 to bring them all to the front, I can arrange them how I like, then choose Save Quick Screen Layout from the View menu, shortcut Alt S. If I go back to the design view, I can get my module views back by using the Recall command from the view menu, shortcut Alt R. Notice the windows are open up and recalled again, even if I have closed them. If I want to save a few different module views, I can use the Screen Layout Manager, shortcut Alt L. Notice I have saved a few custom views for this site file already. One to bring up all the input modules, one to show all the processing modules inside my PA and recording super modules, and one for my auto mixers. Multiple views can be saved, and existing ones can be saved over if changes need to be made. Another tip for getting around a complicated site file is to use the browser view. Located under the view menu, or shortcut control F8, the browser provides a tree view of every window within your site file. The site view is shown at the top of the tree, with the design view for each unit in the site shown with the green sprocket icon. Expanding the design view shows all of the available module views, including super modules, which can be further expanded. Where time permits, it also may be useful to build a custom technician's control screen, 
containing controls and meters relevant to commissioning activities. Custom control screens can be built by right-clicking on certain controls and selecting Copy to Control Screen options from the menu. Controls can be copied singularly, or entire module views can be copied at once. Once in the Control Screen view, the layout of the controls is completely customizable. Elements can be resized, colors changed, text and pictures added, etc. A complete tutorial on building custom control screens will be presented in a later video. For now, I'm showing the example control screen built for this site file. Intended to have a similar feel to a mixing console surface, this control GUI provides the technician with easy access to mic and program audio faders and mutes, as well as pre-fader listen monitoring and metering. Well that's all for this video, we hope you found something useful. Stay tuned for more instructional videos from the team here at Production Audio Video Technology.